Hi, this is Lynn Hunter, L-L-Y-N-H-U-N-T-E-R, and today we are going to paint an ice cream cone. Um, this is for my beach bag, and it's I for ice cream cone, and basically I'm doing one that somebody dropped on the sand. And we're going to start with um, the good yellow base. This is um, the first color we're going to be using is uh, raw sienna. You could also use yellow ochre. Um, basically, what I'm trying to do here first, this um, I have uh, a palette that I have squeezed liquid um, watercolor into and let it dry. You can use watercolor in pans, or this is just the way I do it. You can buy pans and put them in a pan type situation, or buy it in the tubes and you squeeze it into these um, cups and reconstitute it with water. If you've um, used watercolor or never used watercolor, if you don't know, um, the major um, um, uh, ingredients in watercolor are pigment and gum acacia that is made from the sap of the acacia tree. And it is water soluble and once it dries, it dries hard. So it locks the pigment into its glue, but it can. the moment you hit it with water again, it reconstitutes. And it was initially designed as a way to do sketching for oil paintings. Um, if you wanted to do an oil painting and, and try uh, to see what your, your intended colors would be beforehand, or you wanted to take stuff somewhere and sketch it, watercolor was always considered the um, the uh, type of uh, uh, material to use. Um, now, we've got a problem here. I keep on looking at that ice cream cone and going, okay, what colors do I want to make? I'm think thinking chocolate and strawberry swirl. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to take the next color we're going to be using is um, burnt sienna. That's um, a red brown. That's so. I'm. What you don't see on camera is I've got a, a cup of water off screen, and I'm bringing brushfuls of water into my dry palette and mixing in so I can reconstitute the paint. And this is burnt sienna because I'm going to make this particular piece um, of ice cream here is going to be chocolate. So now while I'm painting this, you'll tell this area right here, you can tell there's a little bit of wet there, but this area right here has all dried already as I get a little bit of paint on there. And you'll notice how I did not even care to brush that little bit of burnt sienna away because it was primarily dry there and I know it's not going to leave much of a stain and you can see it didn't leave much of a stain. And that's one of the things that you'll, once you've been painting in watercolor for a while, you get a feel for um, what types of accidents you can fix and how you can fix them. And right now you can see um, uh, burnt sienna has a lot of pigment in it. It's pigment heavy. So wherever I kind of heavy up a pool of burnt sienna, it's going to drop a little bit more pigment in that area. And I'm just going to let that dry and come back in. Now what I usually do is I paint in... Um, Oh shoot, sorry. Um, I paint in transparencies, and watercolor is a transparent medium. And you'll paint in like layers. So you paint from light to dark, and you start with a lighter color, and you keep building it up. And that will um, give more volume to the image, and it will also give a variety of color within the image by laying on more color. Now what I'm doing right now that you can't see off scene, I brought in some cadmium red light and I'm making a puddle of that and I'm making a puddle of alizarin crimson. And cad light, um, cad red light is a warm red and alizarin crimson is a cool red. And 
um, for my strawberry swirl I want to use both of those colors together and what I'm going to do first though as I'm cleaning off my brush the, all the reds that I put in there that I'm going to be using um, I want to um, give the uh, um, vanilla a little bit of um, a shadow so I'm going to mix just a little bit of both the burnt sienna and the raw sienna together because the burnt is more of a red brown and the raw is more of a yellow and I want to give kind of a I'm going to throw a little bit more yellow into that to give it some volume and I will actually I'll come in with blue too a little bit later but right for right now I'm going to give some volume to this vanilla it's going to be vanilla strawberry swirl and while this area is drying a little bit this area up here has gotten um, dry so I'm going to come in with my uh, um, raw sienna again and I am going to give some shadow okay I'm going to start giving some edge or shadow to to give it some volume and the thing is is that you would I'm leaving this side light because um, if you've got a cylinder you'll have reflected light on either side where the edge hits you'll always have a little bit of reflected light so as it goes even though it's going to shadow on this side and this side to give it the volume of a cylinder you'll have just a little bit of an edge of reflected light on the very edge so if you want to give that ice cream cone a little bit more volume you don't want to take the, the shadow quite all the way to the edge you want to leave the edge itself a little lighter and since this is um, um, a wafer cone or it's in a wafer cone what, what um, you'll excuse me if I don't know what kind of cones they are when they they have the the more fluffy texture to them I'm gonna let that dry and that's still a little bit wet in there so I'm gonna start darkening up my chocolate and that's one of the things you have to do when you're doing a small painting like this in watercolor you realize that you've got wet wet edges touching wet edges and you don't want them to bleed into each other so you kind of have to work on when you are adding your layer of colors into each other like you can see there's a little bit of bleed right there so I'm gonna pull the water away I've taken basically what I do I have a paper towel in my hand here and what I'll do is like if it's got too much water on it you'll put the brush on the paper towel sorry there we go and you suck let me do that again so you can see it in camera um, and I dropped a little bit of water there um, this brush is full of water I'll put it on the paper towel and it'll suck all the water out of the brush then the brush itself becomes a sponge and see I it can take up that there's some brown right there that I didn't want and I'll use the brush like a sponge and then there's still too much there and go back and dab it with my paper towel and then the thing is is that even though so I've taken too much color away here I'll wait until for that to dry and then I'll go back in with the uh, the um, raw sienna again to heavy that up so the thing is is that you if you put too much paint down or you've, it's always easier to um, put more paint down than to take paint off but you can take paint off if if you've heavied up an area too much or you've muddied it wet it down and pull it up with a paper towel um, you know I know a lot of people get upset because oh my my watercolor got so muddy well just pull it up with a paper towel if you get too much pigment there it's not doing what you want to do put water on it just you know treat it like it's a palette and pull up what you don't like so okay now that you can tell it's still wet here um, it's still wet here so I don't want to put the yellow in here yet because that's still a little wet there so I'm gonna go back down here and I want to do a little bit with the sand and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of uh, I'm thinking 
just a little bit of sepia into my uh, yellow ochre here because I want to... Uh, nope. Let's go straight. It's like, what color is beach sand? I think I'll just stipple it for now. I'm putting little dots of yellow here. And then I think I might go in with um, a little bit of Payne's Gray. And after that dries, I'll stipple it with a little Payne's Gray to give it more of a sand feel. But right now, it's like you can tell those little pool dots. They'll dry in some odd fashion that I won't be expecting. We'll see how it looks when it dries. Right now, I'm going to push this yellow down again. There we go. Little, heavy it up a little bit more. There we go. Now, I want to drop back the shadows in these cone areas. And I think I'm going to do that with either... Um, I'm thinking with a little bit of... Um, purple mixed with uh, some Payne's Gray. I'm gonna let this this dry again for a little bit and then I'll go in and get those areas in the cone. Right now I think I'm gonna take care of our chocolate with um, a little bit of purple and I should uh, right there. Mm, maybe more of the uh, violet. I have both a uh, permanent purple and a violet and the violet is um, a little to the red and the purple is a little bit to the blue. And I will mix the two together because one is just a little bit too red and the other one's a little bit too blue. So I'll get the, the in-between color I want. And I'm gonna start pulling, putting that on my chocolate. I'm adding purple to the um, burnt sienna to give it the, the more um, chocolatey brown feeling. And this is going a little bit dark, so I'm going to let that dry too, and then I think I'm going to come in with, uh, I'm going to pull some of that out. We'll see what it, what it looks like dry. This is the problem, like I said, with, with watercolor, um, it's difficult to quite figure out sometimes where the color is going because it will dry slightly different color and in a slightly different way than you expect it to. So now I'm going to, let's see here, I'm going to use a little bit of, uh, um, get a smaller brush. This I'm currently using a, uh, this is a number two, Winsor Newton Series 7 Sable brush. And I am going to go to a zero. This is a zero. Yeah, it's like I'm getting a camera. This is a zero. There we go. Um, Use a little bit of burnt sienna and a little bit of purple. Yeah, that's what I want. And then and that's a little bit dark. So These are my sh the shadows inside is like I said it's a mixture of purple and burnt sienna and sometimes it's tough to get the right combination of um, beyond your color how much water is in the uh, the pigment that you're laying or in, in the um, the brush strokes you're laying down. And getting that blend of the ratio of how much water you have in your pigment to uh, what you're laying down can sometimes be a little bit difficult to figure out. And it's definitely a feel thing. It's, it's one of those things that you get from working with the medium for a while. And I hate to say it, it, it's, it's, it takes a little time to figure that out. And a lot of it is feel. It's not a matter of, I can tell you, this is the proportion. 
It's a matter of, does this feel right? Is it looking right? Is that working for you? Is it not working for you? Okay. Now what I'm going to do, all those shadows are a little bit on the heavy side. Especially, let's see here. There we go. So I'm going to just, I'm just, this is straight water that I'm putting in right now. And I'm mixing, I'm scumbling up there. See how that all of a sudden it lightened totally. It didn't pull off all the paint, but it gave me the lightness that I wanted there. And I think that I want that on the edge as well. I'm going to scumble this edge a bit. And pull that up. There we go. That's good. I like that. Now, this is all looking a little bit muddy and matted. So I'm going gonna, gonna to pull up some of the, the color in there. Push, push it all over to the side too. See what happens. And that got a little light, so I'm pulling all, I'm gonna pull some color back in. There we go. That looks better. When I pulled it up, it went a little bit too much. So I'm just going to spread this around a little bit. This is all water. What I'm using right now is just water on the already painted areas. And I'm pulling some of the pigment up and moving it around. Because again, I tell you, burnt sienna is a very heavy pigmented um, color. And that's not quite what I want either, but we'll see what happens after that dries. Pull up some here. Um, I'm taking the water off my brush again and I'm using it like a sponge. I'm pulling it off my brush and using the sponge and using the brush like it were a sponge. So I'm moving this stuff around. Yeah, I'm liking that better. Oh, and I really like, you see what happened now with the, um, the sand? I really like what that what went on with that with just the stippling in the sand and that's you know a lot of times that's what what watercolor does it gives you the happy accidents now I've got a nearite shell here and a little let's let's paint the the uh, the stripes on my uh, strawberry um, I'm mixing again this was the lizard crimson over there and this was cadmium red light and I'm mixing them together because that's what's giving me the actually the color that I really like. And also the, the way the pigments are made, they'll blend into each other a little bit better that way. Okay. This is gonna be the stripey. I think I want a little bit more lizard and crimson. I want to make it a little bit cooler, more of a pinky. Less salmon, more pink. You know, the strawberry vanilla squirrel. There we go. Okay, now. Uh, color for the nearite and color for the, the shell. Hmm. Hmm. Decisions, decisions, decisions. I think I'm going to take a little bit of sepia. I oh, know that's umber. There we go. There's the sepia. This is a little black near right. It's darker in color. And 
Oh, I know. Orange. It's a little orange. Little orange scallop. Now, you can see how heavy the yellow pigment is. I'm going to let that sit there for just a second to get kind of dry because I want the pigment to soak into the paper a little bit. And then do the good old ink. There we go. Okay. Now, we need to get a little bit more shadow. I'm going to take the shadow. Mm, let's make it on this side. Because right now we've got overall all light. So I'm going to put the... Nah, let's put the shadow on this side. And put a little bit more shadow over here and over here and under here. Um, I'm going to try... My Payne's Gray is my go-to for if you want black without black. Payne's Gray is great. It's, it's, the, um, it's the blendy color that works on just about any, anything. I'm going to use it for my shadow, for the, uh, under the ice cream here. And then I'll take a little bit more of that, pull it over here. And that's it looks pretty dark right now, but I'm going to let it sit there for a little bit and that will, um, it's going to dry lighter. And I'm going to put a little purple, use a little bit of the, uh, this purple that I had here to put in my shadow on this side of the, uh, chocolate. stippling of the uh, this is burnt sienna again maybe pull it up here there we go there yeah, that works better taking a little bit off since we're, we're throwing the light on the side and uh, I'm going to take the uh, I'm going to take a little bit of burnt umber this is burnt umber or raw, excuse me this is raw umber and burnt raw umber and raw, raw sienna together okay and throw that into the So it makes that a lighter shadow. Okay. And then I think I'm going to take, it's a little bit heavy there in the color, so I'm going to lighten this up a bit. Scumbling that the color out. Yeah. It gives it a more realistic feel too. Yeah. There we go. Pull out that paint's gray right there. There now now it's time to pull out that paint's gray. And I think we got it. I think we got it. Yes we do. Okay, that's basically it. Um, actually, no, there's one little thing that I can see that I'd like to do. Um, take a really light bit of Payne's Gray and the purple together. And I want to just give just an edge to here. It's 
a little bit heavy. And a little bit of the purple. Yeah. Purple on yellow. It's a yellow cone, and purple is the complement. And complement as a shadow is always um, a nice thing. Yeah, that works very nicely. We're putting a little bit of, of purple into the shadow there. And that's it. That's our ice cream cone. I will go back in and I will go over all these lines, um, heavy up the, the uh, pen lines, and that will crispen up the, the piece a bit. And that's it for ice cream cone. Thank you for stopping by. I hope the, you enjoyed the demonstration. Um, please subscribe, like the video, and come back. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.